Welcome everyone to a NASCAR Racing 2003 physics video. In today's video, we're not going to be looking at gameplay or anything like that. We're going to be taking a look under the hood, and I'm going to give you an idea of sort of what I do uh, in order to make changes to the physics and then test those out in game. So we're looking here at uh, the layout. Now, if you download the uh, physics editor, yours may or may not look similar to mine. I've made a few changes to the layout based off of how I like my workflow to go. I've got two main files that I work with here and then a folder where I've kept the original versions of these. Uh, should I really mess something up in one of my working files, I can go back and reset everything. So the first thing I've done is I've gone into the garage settings file and this is where you can make changes to what you see in the setup options in game. Things like springs and shock settings and uh, available uh, adjustments, that kind of thing. So all of those are contained within this file. So what I've done is I've edited everything I wanted to there, and then I created a new executable here. And I've kept the name so that I'll always know that this these are my garage settings. So then any further changes I make in this file, which is what contains all the tire uh, lines, the, the aerodynamics, the engine, all of that type of thing, are contained within this one huge file. Now you do have the option to break those apart and only use, uh, let's say if you only wanna deal with tires, uh, which is what we're gonna be talking about in this video, then you can have a much smaller file that just deals with the lines that uh, apply with tires. But I choose to work just within the one file that contains all of the physics that I would want uh, to work on. So I'll make any changes in here then I'll make a new executable file using the, the tester program here. And then I'll have another executable that I can use to then copy into my uh, NASCAR Racing 2003 folder and then begin my testing that way. So the whole process, once you get it down, is actually relatively quick. So with that being said, let's actually take a look inside this file. So now we're getting a glimpse at what that original slash exe file looks like in Excel. Now I'll tell you uh, before we go any further that what we're actually looking at on screen is a screenshot of the, the section in Excel because the recording software kept uh, freezing up and then crashing on me whenever I tried to work directly in Excel. So I finally had to just give in, take a screenshot, and that's what we're looking at now. So it's not perfect, but for our purposes, uh, it'll do the job, and it also explains why you're seeing some weird icons that Windows loves to throw up at the bottom of picture files as I'm moving the cursor around. So before we get into the specifics, I'll let you know that uh, this video really isn't about uh, going into great detail about what to change, how to change it, what all the various columns are. So I'm going to sort of throw out a few things here and there, but I'm not going to go into great detail about what everything uh, means. That's not the purpose of this video. That can be done in uh, other videos if need be. But I will tell you that real quickly, uh, we're gonna ignore columns A and B. Uh, those relate to the type of variable and then um, what's your, uh, how this corresponds to the executable file. So we're not gonna deal with those. We're gonna be dealing uh, with C and beyond, with C being the fields that are, uh, the column that are looked at exclusively by the executable file or at least the tester program that we use to edit the executable file. Then you've got column D here, which is originally serves as a duplicate of column C, and it's here for reference. Um, you can leave it the same so that as you make changes, you can see how it relates to the original value and so on. Column E, uh, very quickly, is a text file that uh, our text area that allows you to put various notes in. Now you can see here, I filled in this that says tire wear and then in parentheses player only. Uh, this is not read by the executable file nor or the program that, ex or that changes the executable file. So you don't have to worry about what you put in here. Most of the time you're gonna have question marks because there are so many uh, areas of the executable, we simply don't know what they mean. This is one that I've recently determined was this section here of lines is tire wear. Uh, and it only seems to affect the player only, uh, which is unfortunate because uh, if you remember from the very first video I did in this series, I talked about how I wanted to contain as many or all, if possible, of the physics changes 
to the executable file just to save the trouble of having to go into all the track INI files and make a bunch of updates. So it turns out that's not really going to be possible, or at least based on what I've learned so far, because I made the changes to tire wear in here. And you can see the only changes I really made were uh, to line 24, 37, and 38, which correspond to tire number four and five. And we'll go into that more in a moment, but as to what these represent, but I've made changes to just those because in my testing, uh, I wanted to test out at Texas. And number four relates to the left side tire for speedways, which would be Atlanta, Texas, Kansas, and so forth. And tire number five relates to the right side tire for those same tracks. Uh, tire number two would be the left side tire for Daytona, Talladega, and your, your plate tracks. Tire number three would be the right side tire for those same tracks. And then you can go on, so on, down all the way through. You can see it goes all the way up through 25, and then you pick up tire 16 and 17. And the reason for this is you have different tile, tires for different types of physics within the game and also with different types of tracks. So you start out with your plate tracks for two and three, your speedways for four and five, then six and seven, I believe, are the short track. And then you get into uh, your road courses, then you get into truck tires, then you get into the PTA physics or the, uh, the, the specialized road racing cars and so on. So that's why you have so many different files here. So by the time you get through an entire section, you've determined tire wear for all of the different tires in the game. So I've been focusing on running laps at Texas just to keep things simple. And what I've done is we start out with the original value of 6.33 to the negative six. And I've increased that by roughly 1.5 times. Again, none of this is exact because I'm not worried about this being uh, exact. There are other fields that I do want to be exact, but this isn't one of them. So I've gone essentially from 6.33 to 9.33. That's on the left side tire. Then the right side tire, I wanted to double the wear. So I went from 6.67 to the negative six power up to 1.33 to the negative five power. And again, this is roughly double the tire wear. And then you can see over in column M, I have the word different written. And that is just for quick reference, an easy reference for me so that I can tell as I scroll down through this long file which, uh, which lines I've changed and which ones I have not. Again, it's just a quick reference for me. Uh, the same reason why I put this, uh, this naming in here is, again, it's just quick reference for me to know what I've changed. So uh, this is what the file looks like. Uh, and I've determined recently that 2435 through, I believe, 2460, if I'm reading that right at the bottom, is the tire wear section. So uh, basically what I do is I come in and I look for uh, various things. And one of the things I was looking for was tire wear because uh, I didn't want to change it in all the track I and I files. I wanted to change it just one time in the executable for all the different types of tires and then go on from there. Uh, like I said earlier, unfortunately, it's not going to be possible because it doesn't affect the AI. You need to go into the track I and I file for that, or at least from what I've determined so far. All of this is subject to further testing and, quite frankly, subject to being wrong in some cases if I've uh, misunderstood or uh, looked at something wrong in my results. So you might wonder, you know, how do you go down through this file and determine which things that you're testing and, uh, you know, what lines to start testing in? Well, uh, some of it is just or a lot of it is really just trial and error. Uh, but there are some things that I, I am familiar with from previous work that I've done with physics. Now, some of you may know that uh, I've started out working with physics and NASCAR racing 2003, way back in about 2004, 2005, somewhere in that timeline. And then there was the, the big ordeal about uh, the legal matters and everything. So I dropped it. And uh, I've only recently really come back to it. So some of this I was already familiar with. Uh, from previous work. But then uh, some of you may also know that once I stopped working on NASCAR 2003, I actually moved over uh, when I joined the U.S. Pitts group, the modding group, and I started working on R-Factor. And then later on, we got into R-Factor 2. So we actually did the original 
stock car mod for R Factor. And as part of that, I got familiar with a lot of different things because R Factor is immensely easier to deal with on physics than is NASCAR 2003. So I remember that and I keep those files for reference. So as you know, in this case, I was looking for tire wear. So I looked at the tire wear numbers in R Factor and I said, okay, I, I know about what I should be looking for. And lo and behold, as I was scrolling down through here, I found a section that looked very similar as far as these numbers uh, to what it looked like in R Factor. And sure enough, it turned out to be correct. So that's how I do about it. That's the methodology that I use. Um, again, I'm not claiming to be an expert in all of this. There's tons of stuff in here that I have no idea about and some stuff I'm only just beginning to learn. Uh, it's all based on really time and effort. And there's only so much of each that I have available. So um, if you know of other lines that are available uh, that uh, you figured out, then by all means, share those with everyone because my opinion is we're all working toward the same thing. We all might be working on different mods and different goals, but our end result that we're all looking for is the same. And that is we want to figure out what the different lines in the executable file do. So let's all share and help in any way we can. So if you have any questions about this, I'll be happy to answer them as best I can, but just understand that there's a ton of stuff I don't know. So keep that in mind. Uh, thanks for joining me. Again, feel free to leave any uh, comments or questions you have in the section below and stay tuned for more Knee Pit Gaming.